Welcome to Obsessed Show, a podcast that is designed to inspire, featuring some of the most creative people in the world. I'm your host, Josh Miles. Today on Obsessed Show, I'm chatting with brand identity designer and the host of the Creative Waffle podcast, Mark Hirons. Mark and I got to chat on his show a few weeks ago, and with any luck, these two episodes might go live at similar times. Fingers crossed. Welcome to season four of Obsessed Show. You'll note that we are no longer calling it Obsessed with Design. This season, we'll still be chatting with designers from branding, illustration, architecture, and design thinking, but we'll also be talking to other makers and creatives along the way. In fact, when we started the show, the plan all along was to broaden out and talk to other guests eventually, which was part of why our website and Twitter handle and Instagram are all Obsessed Show. If you're into what we're doing here, you might also want to check out my personal branding and marketing tips called 59 Second Friday. That's over at youtube.com slash Josh Miles. That's enough about season four. Let's talk about today's episode. So for the past few recordings, I have been experimenting with different ways to record these interviews. I'm loving Zoom for the video side, but not loving the audio. And I'm not quite sure that I have this nailed yet. But if you'd like to check out the video side, that's available over at youtube.com slash Josh Miles. And the audio isn't amazing, but sometimes I have to remind myself that I'm video chatting with a guy live who's in the UK five time zones away, and that still blows my mind when I stop to think about it. So without further ado, please enjoy my conversation with Mark Hirons. Mark, good to see you again already, bud. How are you? Yeah, awesome. Thanks very much for the introduction. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Yeah, it's Man, I've been um, listening to your podcast and checking out your stuff on YouTube and and FIFA and all these <laughs> all these exciting things you have going on. I want to dig into all of that stuff, especially. Uh, but first, as uh, you know, for the for the audio only uh, listeners, Mark, you are not an old guy. <laughs> yeah, uh... so you, uh, you're a young man. You've not, not been doing this for that long, but I'm so curious to hear your origin story. So maybe start us off with that. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So I'm 20 years old, uh, and I knew that I wanted to be a designer when I was 13, uh, so I was quite young. Uh, I started off in graphic design class in, in school, um, and just learning about these people, that uh, Wally Ollins and uh, Jock Kinnear and Mark Calvert, the people that signed the British uh, Transport Road sign fonts, and you know uh, Paul Rand and uh, people like that and, and then going on to discover that you can put arrows into logos and like the FedEx <laughs> blew my mind I was like wow that's, let's do some of that <laughs> and yeah I started a cricket magazine at school uh, whilst I was still at school and signed the cover and everything in, in uh, PowerPoint <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was okay and that's why I started off in paint the, the cover and everything was designed in paint Microsoft paint and then moved into PowerPoint for the, the letter tutorial bits and it was okay, but uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Paint and PowerPoint, the two classic designer programs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very limited. I don't know if I have a copy of it. But yeah, it's very limited. Um, sorry, I'm going to try and find one. Yes, I've got one here. Okay. Oh, this nice. Cover. So I don't know if you can see that, but that's like the players are cut out. It took me ages to cut all the players out and the, and it's called the Ray View because Surrey are called the uh, the Ray. I don't know what they call it. Surrey, Surrey, I suppose. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, but, actually pretty impressive for paint and uh, PowerPoint. It's not bad is it? It's not bad. And then inside we had it was all black and white because it was cheap printing. And obviously I didn't know how to use bleed, so I've still got the white edges around <laughs> on the outside. <laughs> and uh, that was the editorial. It's like just disgusting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just ridiculous amounts of text. No, well, all the line left, no worrying about spaces or <laughs> stuff. Anyway, you know, so after that, yeah, after that, I sold a few copies as well, and it was quite exciting. I think people probably felt sorry for me, so they bought some. But uh, <laughs> seeing this young kid wandering around the streets of London trying to sell this magazine. Uh, but anyway, after that, uh, yeah, I got onto Twitter and discovered Twitter and, and started what is now Blue Deer Design. And yeah, I started off working with things I liked and loved like cricket back companies cricket uh, starting from the cricket magazine got one of them to sponsor the magazine but uh, yeah cricket stuff and design like the stickers to go on the cricket bats 
then uh, found out that I was being exploited and, and like it wouldn't <laughs> budge on prices. So yeah, that's not so good. Um, I was charging like five pounds for, for hours and hours of work. Uh, I didn't know anything about it until I started chatting to other designers about it and realized, oh wait, um, this isn't what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that, so that didn't go too well. Um, but after that, yeah, I got a bit more knowledgeable, decided not to work with cricket back companies again, cricket equipment companies. So no, nope, that's it, that's the end of it. Worked with quite a few of them, so I've um, got a feel for who they are and what sort of people they are, and then moved on. Um, but yeah, apart from that, it was just it's just Twitter and started, and, and I've been working with people, contacting people, and trying to build more relationships ever since. So you went straight into selling your services, like straight from yeah. finding PowerPoint and paint straight yeah. to billing clients and doing freelance work. That's that's pretty amazing. I guess it was, it's, I always wanted to run a business, I think. Uh, I've always watched The Apprentice, like the UK version, uh, and I've always been quite interested in, I don't know, I think as I was younger, I was more interested in the cars and the flashy stuff and earning money. But now I'm out of school and I'm a bit more knowledgeable. I'm like, okay, it's not about that. It's, it's about actually impacting impacting lives and cool, creating cool stuff. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's interesting to see like how I've developed as a person as well, just from starting young. And then only the short amount of time, the seven years I've been doing it. So it's cool. Yeah. So did you study graphic design in school? Yeah, I did it in school. Uh, we created uh, stuff like this. Got it all around me here. Um, stuff like packaging. Packaging like there's a, I think it's a perfume or like aftershave packaging. So it's uh -huh. slide it out and then pop it out like that. And it's got a little stand that it stands on. So it's quite handy, quite neat and unique, but it wasn't anything technical. It wasn't really Photoshop until the last year. And um, that's why it's all sort of hand drawn in and oh, yeah. logos were hand drawn. <laughs> I don't know what age that was. That's probably like age, age 16. So it's pretty poor for how old I was, but uh, no, it's not 16. It must be earlier than that. Anyway, that's the sort of stuff I did at GCSE school, um, which it's not great. They're not really technically, you don't really learn in the fundamentals of design. Then you move on to college, uh, sort of one before university, and that's a bit more into the fundamentals and sort of the rules of the graphic design. And that's where you create stuff like uh, like drink cartons. <laughs> it's all about packaging. <laughs> that's actually done in Illustrator, although they tried to make me do a free Corel draw. That was evil. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, but we, I got into Illustrator, I refused to use Corel draw. Uh, so Illustrator, that uh, little package, and then I um, actually got into the real world of graphic design and learned and sort of taught myself a little bit and um, understanding a bit more like how it actually works rather than what they teach you. Uh, so I did a nine month course at Shillington Design College, which is a part time design college. Uh, I got one in Australia and London and in New York as well and Manchester, all over, all over the world. And that was like a fast track university course for me. Uh, so it was a lot, a lot quicker, a lot. I, I don't know. I didn't feel like I needed another three years in education. So yeah. I just fed it through and uh, did nine months there. It was, it was great, but I still found that I didn't really understand like all the, the business side of it. So right. luckily I had been doing that on the side still and I've, I've accumulated that and talked to other designers and illustrators. So um, I've, I've gained that knowledge about sort of learning it through the education system, which is good. Yeah. Yeah. Not, so um, no, no jobs in between for somebody else, just straight to working for yourself. Uh, yeah. I had, I had some, internships and sort of blagged my way into this this one design agency uh, as a freelancer but they were looking for someone with a lot more experience so um, I think it's just a connection that I found and uh, but yeah I had, I had a couple of people there I found out after six months I just I just can't work in a day job <laughs> I just I just <laughs> get so bored of the repetitiveness and just sitting at the desk and doing the same thing and for some reason it's different when you're working on your own stuff when you're doing mm -hmm. something you love and uh, yeah, it, it's really frustrating for me after six months. I just get to the point where I want to explode. So, so yeah, I, I had a couple of those. And then last Christmas, I worked at Sainsbury's to get a bit more money, which is a, a supermarket, uh, part-time night shifts. So a bit hard on the brain and sleeping during the day, sleep pattern was absolutely wrecked. But uh, yeah, yeah, I got a bit more money. So that was handy for Christmas and coming to America and Creative South. But that's that's like That's pretty much all my jobs. Oh, no. Forgot a big one. Sorry, last year again, another six months. Uh, a company that made made lanyards. Um, so I was just doing artworking and office stuff. Uh, but again, six months. Can't do it. I can't crack it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you you mentioned Creative South, and I I see you're wearing the 
the creative south swag here today for our mm. youtube viewers we'll, we'll, we'll have picked that out by now but uh i've been there a couple times uh i don't think we bumped into each other at creative south but uh how many how many of those have you been to yeah i've only been to one i went to last year's um, hmm. so were you there last yeah, year? i was not there last year yeah. nope i was oh, a, we bumped into each other yeah the second one and the fourth one or something like that nice yeah did you, did you say you're going back next year this year uh, I haven't booked it yet. I would love to. That is always a great, a great show. Yeah. It's often uh, the same time as my kids' spring break, so I <laughs> need to figure yeah. that out. Hang out uh, with family or go get inspired. Yeah, it's a hard one. I do what uh, Jeremy Slagle's doing. Just bring your kids along. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah he's cool. <laughs> um, so tell me about what. Uh, I, I do want to dig into the podcast and what you're doing on YouTube and, and especially the FIFA thing, which I think is, is yeah. awesome. Um, but tell me about like, so outside of the podcast or maybe just kind of touch on that. What does a normal week look like for you? Like how often are you doing identity work and what kinds of projects are you working on and how do you kind of split up your time? Yeah. I mean, I, I love to say I'm doing design all the time, uh, but if I'm honest, I don't, I, I, I'm not having the best of luck with clients. I've just finished a good month of February and uh, now it's sort of died down again. And that's, that's freelancing, you know, that's working for yourself. And at the moment, uh, I'm probably doing mainly admin stuff, like emailing people and mm -hmm. just trying to get up some more relationships and trying to make contacts. And I'm also working on a big side project, which I'm hoping to turn into a real, real working project. These, um, these football program covers that I'm doing on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I'm just been a huge collection of those. So hopefully, at the end of this football season, I can email. I can email all the football clubs. That's 92 teams in the football league in the UK. And then um, just yeah, hopefully get a job. Hopefully somehow become a designer at a football club or or sign up a football program cover for a football club whilst working for myself. Um, so yeah, that's, that's that's sort of what I'm doing in the meantime. Uh, so I don't know. I'm probably doing every every day. There's a football game. I'll do at least one program. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a major football game in the UK. So. Uh, I'm probably working on and off like a couple of hours here and there um, over the course of a week. Otherwise, it's just networking and talking to people, podcasting is a lot of the time. Yeah. Well, tell me about how you decided to start a podcast. I mean, that, that's not uh, not super typical <laughs> for every designer to do like right out of school or somebody as young as you in particular to to host your own show. So what was, what was the inspiration or what got that moving? Yeah, so... The podcast is interesting. Uh, I first did one probably a couple of years ago, three or four years ago now. Uh, and that was with a guy called Paddy. Uh, so shout out to him. He's super logo boy on Instagram. Uh, but he he was a teacher and sort of was teaching me everything. And I was asking the questions about being design designer and becoming a designer and stepping into the industry. Uh, and that was it was great. I love putting out a show. I love building up an audience and. Um, I think there's, there's some part of me that's always wanted to be like a radio presenter or a DJ or something mm. along those lines or a TV presenter. Um, and I'm sort of fulfilling that part of me at the moment by doing the podcast. And and after that sort of finished, after the one with Paddy finished, um, we sort of just separated ways. And, and then, yeah, I started, I thought, well, I'll get back into it and started talking to the industry's best. And like you, like yourself, you know, he's just contacting people and it takes up a lot of time, but, uh, yeah, I love it. I love, I love talking to people. So it's um, it's, it's a good it's a good way to do it. And get good information. We, we've definitely had a couple of uh, guests in common. Just Absolutely, looking through yeah. the list, uh, um, who've been some of your favourites so far? Well, uh, I think Stag Sagmeister is probably probably one of the best ones. Uh, the best podcast to go and listen to. Episode one hundred. If anyone wants to listen to it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, him and Ed Draplin, um, obviously the two big people that stand out but then there's so many cool conversations with people that aren't as well recognized uh, and you find out a bit more about them or something you've got in common with them and it's just it's just having a nice conversation i like the, the relaxed ones as well just the normal talks yeah just, just having a conversation not even if it's not about design so it's I don't know, it's a real mix it's a real mix yeah um did you start off doing the companion video the youtube piece from the beginning uh, or was that a newer addition yeah, I think I did. I think I did. Yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to remember. I think I'm pretty sure I did, yeah. Yeah, so for a lot of mine early on, I recorded them via Skype with video, and then we just didn't do anything with the video, which I'm 
kind of kicking myself at this point that I didn't start that early on because I had recorded videos for most of these and I tossed most of those files because they're so huge. You know, usually you get this kind of situation though where somebody's got a, a messy office or whatever and they're not super messy. Like, yeah, oh, dude, did I need to shower for this because <laughs> I didn't do my makeup or I didn't whatever. So I'd always say, oh no, we're just going to use the audio. The video is just for me so we can interact a little better. I always think it's a little more, a little more natural when you can actually see the other person on the other side, as opposed to, especially somebody you've never met before. It's kind of like having this wall that you're trying to communicate through. It yeah. It, it's a bit more real. It's a bit more of a conversation. Uh, and I, I listen to podcasts via YouTube all the time and just put it on in the background. And sometimes it's even just having that noise or having that, if you're working for yourself in your own room, it's like having that noise in the background, which is, it's just nice to have it makes you feel like there's other people around you uh not you're in, in, in you're not alone and <laughs> watching it at the same time it's great uh, but yeah uh just yeah i think the video the video thing's really important for some people and not so much others so it's good yeah. to do it i think you should go and find that old the old files and upload them to your youtube channel yeah i'll have to go see how many of those i can i can still find hopefully i've got more than a few of them um so back to the client work, what, what have you found, um, you know, on the brand and identity side, what, what has made for a good project or a good client for you? Mm, that's a good question. I think it's probably the people that have been most open to design and the most pe people that are most open to uh, wanting me to do the exploration rather than they've got an idea and you know, let's execute that. Right. It tends to be, I mean, the people that I've worked with, it tends to be not the greatest idea. So it's uh, not the one that is best suitable for their brand. So it's, or, the, or even it's the one that they, they, they execute it in their head and it's not going to be the best way it could look. So if, if you get the most creative reign, then that's probably the best way. Um, yeah. But you need to understand their business, obviously. Yeah. That's the question. Yeah. Are there any things that you have found in your career so far that are like, instant red flags or things to watch out for with a client? Yeah. Um, probably people that are, are reply with short answers. And if you're asking the questions via a discovery call, if, if, if they're not answering them properly or giving them short answers, then that's, that's a real worrying thing. Mm -hmm. so it's not willing to open up. Um, or they're not willing to tell you enough about their business, enough things that you can play on in, in the branding. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, yeah, well, that's definitely one of them. Um, along with all the other cliche ones, like like not replying on time or not really caring about it, and yeah, that's one of my main things is is short answers. <laughs> uh, I think I wrote another one down. Can I have a look. I might have to cut this bit out. <laughs> For the clients. Um, yeah. I, okay. No, I didn't. <laughs> Just one of the best. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, all, all the typical red flags, you know. Well, hey, um, I didn't ask you this in advance, but um, I, I like the name of your company and your podcast. You know, you have these like really fun, lighthearted kind of names. Where where did those two names come from? Okay, yeah, this is an interesting one because the podcast one people don't seem to get it in America. Like, it, it's, it's crazy waffle. So in in the UK, waffle means sort of waffling along and talking too much and. Like, in, like rambling, a bit ah. like rambling, and you probably already recognise that I do it quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening to this, and I think that's perfect for for me and the podcast, like creative waffle, creative rambling, yeah. And then blue deer, um, the, the idea that I'm sort of going with behind that is that in Surrey, where I live in the UK, uh, they've got quite a lot of deers, um, and my favourite colour is blue, so I sort of just put them together. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of good. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Yeah. I had, uh, I don't think I had ever heard of waffle as just rambling along or kind of going on about something. Um, yeah. We use it as obviously the pastry, but also as like flip flopping or changing your mind as a waffle. Yeah, that's a good one. And I, when, I, when I heard that from, I was a bit worried because I didn't want people to get that impression of the podcast. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know. We'll see how, see how it plays out in America, but yeah. that's really Yeah, I was wondering too, if it was like, you know, there are two sides to the story or there's, I don't, I don't know. Could so, be. Yeah, it could be. My, my kids eat a lot of frozen waffles. So that was the first thing I thought of was <laughs> toaster waffles. 
Yeah, they're good. They're good. I've got some <laughs> cupboards. <laughs> so, um, what do you think is maybe like your your favorite thing to work on right now? Yeah, I think it's definitely the program, the football program covers. Mm-hmm. Uh, you see that from my Instagram. It's just it's all of that really. Uh, just working on that big project until the end of the year or end of the football season. Um, so, my July time probably. Uh, just working on that, and that's definitely like just my pure, pure, pure passion for football. Uh, so it's something that I've grown up with, and something that I still watch. And pretty much in the UK, you can watch football every single day of the week, like on on TV. It's a new game, whether it's in Europe or it's a women's game or a men's game, it's it's always on. So um, yeah, it's just something that I, I want to carry on and explore the design and culture of football. So the marriage of those two things is when you're taking the podcast on the road and playing FIFA with other designers around the UK. Tell us where that idea came from. Yeah, that's a good segue. I like that. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so I decided, well, actually, Geo Law, my friend up in Sheffield, he decided it would be good to have a design series uh, where you have a chat show, basically, and it's a bit more relaxed. And he suggested the idea of FIFA, and I sort of ran with the idea and stole it off him. And, and uh, we would be recording... Well, it'll be, it'll be done by the time this podcast goes out, but we're recording a whole week on the road of just going to different um, plate cities in the UK, sort of 12 hours worth of driving, um, over, spread over the course of a week and just playing FIFA against loads of people and having a good time. Uh, that'll be next week. So yeah, I'm very, very excited about that. Yeah, nice. That's uh, It's fun segue to, to hear you talking about design, like uh, like our friend from Design Cuts and yeah i'm seeing his office and kind of how they do things and asking him serious questions and then he's like wait wait how do you do that what do i what do i need to do here <laughs> talk about the game yeah it became really apparent the, the cut shots of the actual footage of the game it was cool yeah it's, it's so hard to concentrate whilst you're playing the game uh, you're really trying to concentrate on playing fifa the football game and uh people who don't know and maybe we should come over to america and do a madden one that'd be cool oh there you go i don't know how to play madden though but uh no, I- I haven't it, played it in years, but <laughs> I'm sure we'd figure it out. It's so hard, though, to concentrate whilst I'm trying to ask questions and host a show. Um, but, we'll, yeah, it's going to be good. It's, it's the first one with Tom. I really enjoyed it. We actually recorded it twice because uh, I, I mucked up the, the footage. Um, didn't rec- I took out the Xbox lead before I saved the game. So Oh, shoot. Yeah, I don't know why I did that, but it, it happened. And unfortunately, he beat me this time, uh, first game. But... <laughs> Yeah, I was gutted. You can see in the video, I'm genuinely annoyed about it because this shouldn't happen. He hasn't played FIFA. I, I played it for pretty much my whole life. And Anyway, it's another story. <laughs> so have you seen the Jerry, Jerry Seinfeld uh, Netflix comedians in cars getting coffee? No, I haven't. No. It's this uh, Netflix series. So Jerry Seinfeld pulls up in a different car. A different celebrity gets in. They go somewhere and have coffee and they just talk about their career, talk about you know, kind of the insider conversations of being a comedian. So that's, that's a lot of what your series reminded me of. It's, it's interesting. Yeah. I haven't even seen that, but it, it'd be worth checking out. I think there might be some, some inspiration for other ways to, to do the FIFA recordings. Yeah. Is, is it a bit like the James Corden one? Cause he does. Yeah, a similar, similar kind of idea, except it's, um, you know, it's not always necessarily funny. Like sometimes it's really serious or, Oh, nice. um, you know, really intense conversation. And, and sometimes it's, it's hilarious. So it's, it's worth checking out. There's a couple, couple series. Uh, yeah, this I podcast, by the way, is not sponsored by Netflix or Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> if either of them want to sponsor, you can, you can give me a ring. Um, tell me about, um, you kind of listed off a couple of design heroes at the top of the show, but anybody in particular that stands out to you today? Yeah, Aaron Draplin is, is going to be the one that I always speak of. I'm actually working on trying to bring him back to the UK for a sort of a workshop and talk day uh, to cool. in, in November. But yeah, it, he's I've got him up there. So I've got six people above my computer uh, and, and he's the only designer on the list. So I've got Aaron Draplin, Gary V, uh, Jocko Willink, who's an ex-Navy, ex-Navy SEAL. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you've got Joe Rogan and you've got Jordan Peterson and Conor McGregor. So that all of those people represent different things in my brain and and, and just inspire me uh, and draplin's on there for his humbleness and just pure sort of humility and, and such a nice guy factor uh yeah i, I think I, more than his work i think i take inspiration from from him for that and just just the amount, the amount that he's achieved is incredible 
and the fact that he's so nice about it and so willing to talk to anyone yeah and so much time for new people is is amazing and you know being on my podcast twice being on other shows so many podcasts you listen to him and, and he's just got so much time for everyone uh, and he's just been brought up the right way so yeah that's that's what i take inspiration from aaron from yeah awesome i would agree with that wholeheartedly he's uh you know if people have only seen him like on youtube or on stage he can have a pretty intense presence but like as soon as he's off stage he is so low-key and so chill and just super humble and super nice guy and also the most listened to episode of obsessed with design was yeah (laughs) no surprise say well that's the same as me like can't get past it (laughs) no one else can beat him but uh but, but yeah, you, like you listen to him on stage, and when he's talking, and it, it's so powerful. He's talking about his dad, and he's mm-hmm. getting emotional. All of the audience is getting emotional because he's getting emotional. He's got such mm-hmm. a such an aura about him that everyone wants to tune in, and everyone wants to listen, and be really. Um, everyone's focused when he's talking. No one's like nodding off or or sleeping. Yes, yeah. he's <laughs> yeah, he's an important character in this in this design field, especially. Like it's so different to the people or or the perceptions of like Michael Bayrou or Paul Cher or, or the Pentagram people or I don't know, whoever else is up that on, on top level because he's he's just like a normal guy and, and it yeah. feels like he's he's reachable wherever everyone else doesn't feel as reachable and and mm-hmm. he's anyway I, I could talk about him forever but he's an amazing guy yeah he's a yeah. Real, real inspiration and he needs to know it if he if he ever listens to this but yeah absolutely. Aaron, if you are watching, thank you. And uh, thanks for what you continue to do. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think one of the things that I figured out pretty early on in my career also, I just, um, which was actually with Michael Beirut, of all people, I was um, volunteering for our local AIGA, uh, graphic design organization, if you all are in, in design or branding. AIGA is a fantastic group, especially for folks early in their career. But I had a chance to volunteer to just help out with this event, and I didn't realize he was the speaker until kind of late into it because I had just agreed to help. And uh, Michael came into town. This was uh, probably in 2001, and uh, he was there for like a dinner talk. And then all the volunteers who were available went out to dinner with him afterwards after the talk. And, you know, people are sort of sitting down and I ended up sitting down right next to Michael Beirut at dinner and talking his ear off, or at least it seemed like it's me. I'm kind of a, an introvert in a group setting, although I, I do this. I, you know, when I get in a bigger group, I don't really talk that much. But with him, I was like, hey, blah, 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 blah. Um, it was amazing. And so, first of all, it was amazing to get a chance just to talk to him in person uh, very early in my career. But second of all, it really kind of just took the mystique of like, Ooh, he's a he's a famous designer, so I can't reach him. Turns out he's a person. <laughs> he's human, uh, and and all of these people that we hold on pedestals, you know, amazing designers or not, or amazing people or not, they're they're all people. So, yeah. um, you That's know, the thing I love people watch these kind of shows that they they get that, like they get the humanity of these people that they, you know, they deal with similar problems to what you and I have to deal with. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. But yeah, uh, that was yeah. That's from from something I learned from Creative South was like talking to all these cool people, and they're all you know considered on the next level. And you do realize, like, even from doing the podcast, you realize actually, yeah, they are all human. And I'm sure Michael Beber is a lovely guy. I don't mean to. I don't know him. That's the thing. I need to interview yeah, him right. and talk to him before I get. To, but like speaking to Paul Desher and then speaking to Aaron Drappen, it feels like a very big difference. I mean, they're, mo- they're both lovely people and I really appreciate them giving, giving me some time. And but it, it just feels like a bit of difference. You know? mm-hmm. I, don't know, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the New York and Portland vibe. Maybe it's something in their personalities. But yeah, it, it just, anyway, you can talk to anyone in this industry. That is important. Like, the whole industry is really open. Um, so it's, it's cool that you can chat to anyone. That's probably why I started the podcast. Like, the fact that you can talk to anyone in this industry and people are willing to be on podcasts and mm-hmm. by starting one, you get in front of these people. If I didn't start, if I didn't have a podcast and I said, can I have 20 minute Skype call with you? Then that probably wouldn't happen. <laughs> It'd be like a lot <laughs> less. Like, like if I'd asked Paula Sheriff, I can have half an hour on just to call for you. And she wasn't getting any value. She wasn't able to speak on anything or, or like it wasn't going anywhere. She mm-hmm. probably wouldn't have done it. She's probably like, okay, just ask me in the emails. And right. Yeah. Yeah, even then, you know, I'm, I'm still impressed that how many people have said yes that will give you an hour of their of their week 
just yeah. to talk and just to be on the show. Like that's, it's pretty incredible. Um, and you know, that was one of the reasons that I started my show was just, I, I would like to talk these to these people and learn from them. And man, if I can share that conversation with other people, that's pretty cool. But step number one is kind of selfish. Like I, I just want to, I want to learn from you. I want to meet you. I, I, if I had a chance to bump into these people at conferences, I would want to talk to them uh, just to kind of get their story. So um, it's just a cool thing to be able to share that. Yeah, that's the thing. That's that's why I think a lot of people start a podcast because they want to be having these conversations and if they can help other people by sharing them, and that's perfect. That's exactly, it's, that's, that's great. So. so Mark, this is the question that I ask everybody. Um, we designers are... Are an obsessive lot who <laughs> are obsessed with many things often um i'm curious what you find that you are most obsessed with right now it's football isn't it i mean i'm holding right. <laughs> i'm holding a football <laughs> Ta-da! yeah i got oh no i have one's upstairs but yeah um i have a football underneath my desk and i just kick it like like just play around with it just because it's, it's fun but uh Football, I've got football shirts around me. I've got football, I've got a TV down there. I watch football on every day, pretty much. Football, 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 football. Talking about football. <laughs> it's okay only. Uh, yeah, I think it's football, um, football design, football culture. I'm really going into that route of football culture, football design, and bringing back the retro shirts and bringing back uh, sort of patterns and recognizing things that people used to do in, in old football programs and uh, brochure designs. And I'll pick one up, like stuff like this. Stuff like that, like really high contrast photos on yeah, on like cool. bright pink, bright pink uh, program covers. That's what I want to do. I want to do stuff like that, and it's exciting. Like stuff, like, the smell of them now is disgusting. It smells, it smells like all, all moldy and all stuff. Dust mites. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I just think that's so exciting, and just this the the simpleness of it. Um, but it's, it's so bright and, and engaging. You don't get that on football program covers these days. And I'm trying to bring it back. I'm starting, mm-hmm. a, starting a movement. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm excited about. Football. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, maybe you've already answered this question, but um, what's, your, what's your biggest dream project or dream client on your horizon? Yeah, I don't know if it's on my horizon or not, but... Um, yeah, it definitely would be a World Cup. Like seeing what Lance Wyman did with the sixty, yeah. I get confused because he's done a World Cup and a and the Olympics. I don't know if it's the sixty-eight one. I can't remember which. Was it sixty-six? Did the World Cup or was that the Olympics? No, not sixty-six. We'll have our fact checkers. <laughs> yeah, that, put that in the show notes. Well, it definitely wasn't. No, it was eighties, wasn't it? I'm on about. I'm, I'm talking rubbish now because sixty-six was England when it was in England. Uh, so it was eighty. It was either eighty-six. Or eighty-eight. It's one of those two. He did a World Cup and a anyway. Forget it. Yeah, <laughs> no, I think his yeah. Olympic one was the sixties. So. Oh, okay. Fair play. Yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, um, but, the, but the World Cup stuff might have been the eighties. Yeah, I don't know. I can't remember the dates, way, but his his stuff again is like so timeless that if you looked at his work from the sixties or the eighties, you'd go, I don't know. <clears throat> These yeah, might have been I, like the next day. It just it's yeah. got such a cool you know, punchy vibe to it. And it's got, just has that characteristic. And he's another person that is, is very, very nice to talk to. Uh, okay, yeah, again, it's, it's just this, in, just blown away. Every time I speak to someone, I'm blown away how nice this industry is. I'm talking to yourself. And like last week, we talked on our, my podcast. And then this week, we're talking on your podcast. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing to just have these conversations uh, and just talk about things and be open with each other. Uh, I know that I can message you about things if I'm having trouble or, yeah. or I hope you feel the same way. So it's, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, is there anything that drives you nuts? Like anything that, um, so sort of like the, the sister thing to the obsession is that designers get on these little kicks and they're like, oh, I hate this font or I hate this color. Or every time I see this trend, it drives me crazy. Is there anything that really bugs you right now? In design, I mean, there's a lot of stuff outside. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff outside <laughs> of design that's um, <laughs> that's frustrating. But inside design, people that don't care about design is, is probably quite annoying. I thought, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's going to come back to the football programs again. But people just shove adverts in this football program that people are paying five pounds for. Five pounds is a lot of money for a little booklet per per match. Yeah. Well, it's not. It's, yeah, it's it's crazy amount of money. 
and and they're just shoving adverts and adverts in it. They're making loads of money out of this little booklet, and they're not caring about the reader. Just just give like let someone design it properly. There's so many beautiful adverts in these old these old programs, um, and they're all black and white, and it's all it's all nicely laid out. And it's considered, but people that don't these days like football clubs don't care really about the design. There's only a few football clubs that uh, care about the the, the cover and they get specialist artists to do it i know there's like people are listening and do know football norwich city uh norwich city norwich football club i don't want to say city and my brain's going this is what i mean about rambling right i just go on one and it just goes miles my brain goes 100 miles an hour my mouth just splurts everything out it's not norwich city it's norwich uh they've got some pretty good covers and they're working with um uh, someone oh damn Sorry, I can't remember his name, but uh, they're working with Patterns of Play. They're working with Patterns of Play and they're doing some really cool covers where they're getting different uh, illustrators and designers to do a different cover uh, each week. And, and at, least they're, at least they're considering design, at least they care about it. But then there's other clubs that just don't care and they just get some random person to the cover. It doesn't really look good. And um, I'm sure they're selling less covers because of it, mm-hmm. less programs because of it. So, so people that don't care about design it really frustrates me. That's a really long, long-winded answer. I'm sorry for rambling. No, it was good. It was a good example of waffle. Yeah, yeah I've done it a few times. <laughs> so what would you say is maybe your favorite piece of advice to pass along or one of your favorite pieces of advice that you've received? Yeah. Um, first of all, I've got a poster up there of it. Uh, Radim Malinik from... Uh, the, the author of Book of Ideas, who is a good friend of mine now, he says that everything is a work in progress. And I like that because it, it means that, you know, you haven't created your best work and you're moving forward and everything is, is on the right road. If you're, if you're on the right road, if you're, you've got tunnel vision, if you're looking down the right road. Um, so, yeah, everything is a work in progress. Uh, but also recently, Tom Ross from Design Cuts really enlightened me and, and really made me flick a switch on, the idea of not having followers, not, 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 sorry, not having, not wondering, not worrying about followers and the number next to your name. And, and that's, yeah, that's been, that's been really useful for me to switch off and not compare myself to other people. And it, just, just caring about the people who are following you. Say you've got a thousand people caring about those thousand people that and messaging them and actually making real relationships with them rather than worrying about how to get to 10,000. Mm-hmm. That's what's, um, that's what, I, that's what's, that's good advice. So try not to think too much about the number, get out of your head. It doesn't mean anything. If you're not getting the right engagement, try and build actual relationships with a thousand people. Cause that's a lot of people. If you've got a real relationship, with right. a thousand people, that's a crazy amount of people. Or and, uh, I mean, even maybe more simplistically, if you have a thousand people and you interact with five or 10 of those a day, yeah, you know, have real, like instead of just posting and posting and posting and posting, actually, commenting on their stuff or asking them questions or liking their things. And yeah. you know, that's, that's a whole different, that's a whole different gear. <laughs> yeah. Know, I interact with you on, on social platforms and a couple other YouTubers and Twitter guys that I actually like will comment on their things yeah. back and they've got tens or hundreds of thousands of followers and they'll actually write things back. Like, Holy cow. They're probably not used to that. Yeah. I think it's even like on a smaller scale, like 10 people, having 10 people that you, you've really got a good relationship with is better than having 50 people that you, know, you don't know. Right. It's good. And then they can refer you work. I mean, I've got three projects this year or, or referrals this year from people that are designers. Uh, and that's only come about because I'm doing mm-hmm. the podcast. It's only come about because I'm commenting on their posts. I'm, I'm building a relationship with them. I'm actually getting to know them through going to networking events or going to, um, meetups where you can you can meet your friends and have they are friends that's it they're not even other designers yeah, right like it, having friends making friends because they you know you need you want to be more friends with more people not just because you you're thinking about the referral later on down the line it's building friends rather than relationships everyone puts a marketing spin on it but it's uh yeah building yeah. more friends i think you and i talked about that a bunch on when you interviewed me uh, yeah. So I won't go soapbox again on that, but uh, if you guys want to hear more about that, track that down on, on the creative waffle. Okay, Mark. So just a handful of questions before I let you go here. Um, where do you find the best sources of inspiration for you personally? That's a good question. Yeah. I mean, if I'm going to keep bringing it back to what I'm working on at the moment and football covered programs and 
um, program covers it's going to be the retro stuff the old stuff and even in design like we can look at old old work and i really marvel of it because we've they've gotten rid of all the bad stuff that wasn't didn't live on all their all of their bad stuff because we're looking at pinterest right now and we're seeing a lot of bad stuff because it's all current stuff and it hasn't been filtered out if we're looking at old stuff like these program covers or like these these books uh, lance wyman's books or stuff that's made it through the generations i think that's where i'm getting most of my inspiration from at the moment just past stuff that still works today and um, very functional design um yeah and, and just stuff that's actually living yeah cool well we can uh definitely link to all the things in the show notes but uh tell our tell our listeners and viewers where to where to find you online wicked yeah i mean if you want to hear me ramble on some more <laughs> <laughs> If you do, but uh, I mean, thank you if you do. But yeah, Creative Waffle Podcast is is where you can find me. CreativeWaffle.club is the website. Yeah. Very cool. Well, we'll definitely link up to all that stuff. Anything else you want to leave our listeners with before you go? Um, yeah, just just carry on. You're not gonna. You haven't done your best work, and if you're in the right mindset, you'll be all right, and everything is all right in the end. Mark, that's great. It's been uh, fun chatting with you again. Hope we can connect again here soon and i will definitely interact with you <laughs> online and uh thank you for being obsessed with design thanks for having me it's awesome okay kids that's show number 113 officially in the books i hope you enjoyed our chat with mark hirons and if you didn't catch this earlier we'll be releasing a few of our interviews also to youtube this one is at youtube.com slash josh miles as we expand our topics here at Obsessed Show, please tweet at Obsessed Show and let me know who else you think we should talk to. Do you want to hear from video people, from authors, from painters? What kind of creators and creatives and makers are most interesting to you? Because that's who I want to interview on this show. Don't forget to check out that new 59 Second Friday series all about personal branding and marketing on YouTube. That's youtube.com slash Josh Miles. And it would mean a lot to me if you just hit that subscribe button. Every subscriber means a lot. You can get all of today's show notes on our website, still at obsessedshow.com. And if you haven't already while you're there, add your email address to our newsletter. I'll update you on some of my favorite new episodes and some cool things I find in my daily obsessions. Of course, all the links are over at obsessedshow.com to all the places you can find this show, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, Google Play, and Spotify. So no matter where you find your podcasts, chances are you can listen to Obsessed Show from there. Just head over to obsessedshow.com. The Obsessed Show got its good looks from Miles Herndon, a branding agency in beautiful downtown Indianapolis. Visit milesherndon.com to learn more. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.